Today I'm going to finally unveil my periodic table display. I made this display to show off my element collection, which has now grown large enough where I think it deserves a fancy exhibit to show it off with. Uh, I completely designed and built this whole unit myself. Uh, I spent three months designing and making small prototypes before I bought anything for the final display. And when I had settled on a final design, it took over a little over a year to build from scratch, uh, working on and off during my free time and on weekends. Uh, this project was extremely complex and the full details would make this video way too long. Uh, so I've written five different posts uh, on my blog that describe each major section of the table's construction. Uh, I'll summarize the construction here and show off some of the features, but check out those links for all the specifics. So first is the backboard. This is plywood with a sanded birch veneer. It's a product from Home Depot called Sandy Ply, uh, which I painted black to provide a good backdrop. The overall display is 4 foot by 5 and a half feet, and I split the backboard into four segments to make the whole thing easy to transport. Uh, you can see some of the splits as I pan across here. Uh, this way I can take it places to show it off at events for the local science museum or the uh, community college and things like that. Uh, around all four edges is an aluminum channel to give a nice border around the whole thing. The display is freestanding, so I made two triangles, uh, painted those black as well, and attached them to the sides via a few screws and an L-bracket on the back. Here's a rear view of one of the side triangles where you can see the uh, L-bracket attaching it to the back. You can also see I had to slice the end of the triangle off because it wouldn't quite fit on the uh, desk that I wanted it for, uh, but the extra length is good for uh, stability when I take it places. Uh, and then also here's the L brackets that attach each individual segment of the backboard together. Um, so that's just done with a couple of nuts and bolts. Each element has its own acrylic shelf that it rests on. Uh, these are 3 by 3 by quarter inch acrylic squares which plug into the backboard with shelf pins. I attach the pins to the squares using a plastic adhesive called Weld On Number 4, which makes an incredibly strong bond. It actually chemically welds the, the two pieces of plastic into one piece. Uh, through a couple of accidents while building this, I actually found out that the shelf pin itself will snap in half before the glue will fail, so it's pretty good stuff. I had to do this for all 120 shelves, so that's 240 shelf pins that needed to be glued on. Behind each shelf is an LED strip, so that each individual shelf can light up. These strips each have three LEDs of a single color on them, and the whole board has six different colors to represent different categories of elements, like the noble gases or the lanthanides and actinides. Uh, these LEDs required another small hole to be drilled in the backboard for the wiring, which adds another 120 holes total. So that makes a total of 360 holes, including the shelf pin holes, that all needed to be drilled, all at precise locations across the board. The final part of this project is controllability for the LEDs. This portion was designed by my good friend and very skilled electrical engineer, Bill Porter, uh, who convinced me to have controllability versus my original intent of just sort of a constant on. Um, he goes into much, much more detail than anything I can do here on his own blog. Um, so I have a link to that that you can follow. Um, but here I'll give you the quick overview. There are nine LED driver boards mounted here on the back of the display uh, that are configured in a chain. Uh, these drivers are controlled by an Arduino master controller mounted to the front uh, with a custom shield. Bill designed the driver boards and the shield himself, and we both soldered everything together when the parts came in. The Arduino passes data down the chain to the driver chips along the black phone cord, and the drivers in turn pass the signals to each LED. Power travels along the red and black wires. Because the whole display splits into four pieces, there are connectors at each division that allow the electronics to be disassembled quickly and easily. Uh, it looks like quite a rat's nest back here, but we tried to clean it up as best as we could, and I think it came together pretty well. So now for the good part. Currently the display is programmed with four modes, which are toggled by power cycling the controller. The first is uh, slave mode, which allows the master controller to accept visual frame data from another device. Uh, I plan on writing a tablet app to interface with the display in this mode that will allow me to control the lighting through a graphical periodic table. Uh, right now that's a little ways off, so I'm going to call that phase two of the project. So at the moment, slave mode doesn't do anything. Second is the mode that I call breathing. Uh, this mode slowly fades the brightness of every LED from zero up to maximum and then back down to zero. It makes for a nice stress test of the display as it takes it to full power on all the LEDs. 
Uh, each LED draws 20 milliamps, so every segment on full brightness will draw a total of 2.4 amps at 12 volts. It actually ends up being closer to 3 amps because of the driver boards and the Arduino drawing a little bit extra power. Next is the Twinkle, or Starry Sky mode. This mode randomly selects an element, a brightness value, and a time value, and then it fades the LED strip to the chosen brightness over the chosen duration. Uh, this is done for 15 elements simultaneously to achieve a nice starry sky effect. Uh, the rest of the display remains on at half brightness. So I think this will be the default mode for display because the, uh, the light's not too bright and the twinkle effect gives the table a bit of motion, which I like. And finally, the really fun one, the equalizer. This was actually a last minute addition by Bill. Uh, this converts the entire display into an audio equalizer, allowing it to listen to ambient noise uh, via a small microphone on the Arduino shield and display the spectrum on the columns of the table. You can see it reacting to my voice right now. Uh, to really appreciate it though, we need some music.